Hello everyone, I'm Michael Gallagher and this is a quick presentation on mobiles for development, otherwise known as M4D. Uh, in this presentation we'll do a quick introduction, we'll discuss uh, developmental needs, and we'll give some relevant examples and some references that might be useful for you if you're doing your own research. Uh, my name once again is Michael Sean Gallagher, there's my email address, uh, gallagher.michaelshawn at gmail.com in case you wanted to contact me. So who am I? Uh, I'm Michael Sean Gallagher for the third time. I'm a doctoral student at the Institute of Education at the University of London. Uh, I've, in my past professional life, I've worked on several projects in Africa towards creation of digital libraries, uh, digitization projects, and information literacy. I worked much more in the university higher ed uh, sphere in Africa. I'm also a blogger, an avid blogger at michaelshawngallagher.org, and that's where I discuss uh, MOOCs, e-learning, m-learning, uh, mobiles for development, etc. So the purpose of this presentation, uh, if you're just coming to this presentation outside the scope of the course, uh, please note that this presentation was designed as a primer to the discussion surrounding week three of the 2012 edition of Moby MOOC, which is uh, an open, a massive online open course dedicated to mobile learning. Uh, it's week three, and it's uh, week three is a uh, one of the sessions in week three is based on mobiles for development. It borrows heavily, and I, I want to stress very heavily from the sources listed on the references slide at the very end. So, if you want more detail, I suggest you go to those sources and look through it carefully. It's not comprehensive; it can't possibly be. Thousands upon thousands of these projects is, exist already in many developing nations, so it, the scope is broad. It's it's all over the place. Uh, but for the sake of brevity, this presentation focuses on some particular areas and some very particular developmental needs, and more, more importantly, just the general overview of what it is. So let's try some definitions. What is M4D? What's Mobiles for Development? Mobiles for Development is the application of mobile technology to bridge the digital divide in developing nations and developing pockets of developed nations. Uh, and there's a caveat attached to that particular part of the definition, which I'll explain in a bit. Uh, it's an attempt to meet development needs in all sectors of all societies. And it's an attempt to take advantage of the, I should say, the ubiquity of mobile technology in both the developed and the developing world. Now, uh, the caveat is, please note, uh, in this definition, which is not exactly the norm, I am using both developing and developed nations uh, because we all know that developed and developing are, are very broad distinctions at a national level. Uh, there are sub pockets of developed nations that are, uh, and all you know, by any definition, can be classified as developing. Um, so we want to include both of those. It can be applied broadly at a national level in develop, developing nations, and a little bit more on a uh, you know a macro and a, a micro distinction. Uh, in developed, uh, developing pockets of developed nations as well. So uh, that's not exactly the industry norm in dealing with this definition, but that's how I choose to, uh, I choose to define it. Mobiles for development is the application of mobile technology to increase, and now I'm borrowing heavily from the slide listed there, uh, the, the URL listed there, so I, I do recommend you go taking a look at that. It's a good, it's a good presentation. Uh, to increase economic growth. So it's, it's about reducing transactional costs, increasing sales. That's one application. Uh, it's about increasing empowerment. This is the biggest, uh, in, my, in my mind, this is the biggest one. Uh, empowerment of learning, uh, technical capacity. So when I say technical capacity, we see uh, local technical solutions being developed uh, to needs. Uh, discussing community empowerment, communication empowerment, the ability to, to be heard and to listen. Uh, choice. Uh, it increases choice. So this is related to empowerment in my mind, but it's about new associations, new modes of participation, civic government, uh, all the way down to community support. Uh, many exciting things taking place there. So, uh, rightly or wrongly, M4D, as a, is considered a subset of ICT for development, uh, is related to activities that are considered Millennium Development Goals, the MGDs, which include uh, the eradication of extreme poverty and hunger, universal primary education, promoting gender equality and empowering women, reducing child mortality, maternal health, com uh, combating HIV and AIDS, malaria, other diseases, ensuring environmental stability, and developing a global partnership for development. Now, Mobiles for Development deals with those, but mu usually at a much more uh, granular level. Uh, these, are, these are broad goals. 
So development goals. So mobile technology is ubiquitous and can be manipulated towards grassroots projects. In fact, it's, it's so far, at least I think the evidence supports that uh, a, a good portion of the successful, quote unquote, successful projects are developed at a grassroots level uh, without relying on a top-down kind of government initiative. So many mobile projects have served as economic uh, solutions to development needs. Uh, so it's not just social, educational, cultural, or medical, sort of the hallmarks of a non profit kind of grassroots field. There are, there are economic incentives as well. Uh, and so as a supplement to the Millennium Development Goals of 2015, we should probably think of M4D as further categorized in the following ways. Uh, so we see these projects and initiatives in all, these sec uh, in all these sectors. So we have the health and medical field, the agricultural field, uh, educational, uh, and, and uh, you know, it's a subset of that. Literacy is, is a primary goal here. Uh, governance and citizen involvement. We see many, many mobile governance uh, types of initiatives. Journalism and uh, economics and banking, mobile money. Uh, M-Pesa is, is an example of that. Context, the most important part about all of this, and this is what we want to focus on in Moby Mook in week three when we discuss this, is it's about context. Local needs demand, or I would say demand, a, a localized solution. So it's either a local solution or a localized, heavily localized. Local solutions, at least the good ones, are defined by local context. What are the local needs? What are the local modes of communication? What are the, what are the norms of interaction at, at the local level? It, it varies dramatically between cultures. Uh, local context is generally best defined, organized, and sustained by local communities. So, you know, we have to think of this in local terms, not just in creation, but sustainability as well. Uh, you know, when, uh, if, if, a, if an organization comes in, develops a, a, a solution, whether technology or otherwise, and then just suddenly leaves, uh, the local community has to sustain that, and it has to make sense for them. So it's important that, you know, their voice is heard from the very beginning. So context, and uh, once again, I'm borrowing from uh, this presentation uh, linked to here by uh, Jacob Svensson. Uh, technology in itself does not lead to social change. People decide how a particular technology will be used and depending on the political and socioeconomic environment in which they live, adapt it accordingly. So now the takeaways from that kind of uh, quote is it's about community, it's about context, there is technology, I, you can't pretend like it doesn't exist, so technology is involved and adaptation. So it's the local community taking whatever exists and manipulating it for their own use and their own need. It's very important, that process. So questions, uh, some questions we want to consider as we go through uh, this week of discussion. So does this project serve a local need? That's very important to, uh, to consider. Do outside parties have a right need to get involved. Now, this is a pretty broad question, but this is a question all uh, ICT for development projects and uh, mobile for development projects, all development projects, period, technology or otherwise, should be considering, uh, should be asking, do we have a right to get involved? Uh, or are we in a capacity to s simply assist the local community to, to, to make their own solutions to, to empower them? Now, another big question to really analyze here is, does a culture exist to assimilate this project? Does a culture exist to use this project? Uh, you know, it might be the greatest solution on paper in the world, but if there is no apparatus culturally, socially, uh, economically, politically, uh, to assimilate the project, then it's useless. It's a useless project. So does local capacity exist to create, administer, and sustain this mobile project? Is there capacity on the ground? Is there will? in need on the ground to sustain this uh, this project. Do local initiatives exist that can be bolstered? So rather than uh, creating something new, uh, an analysis of the local context is necessary to determine is there something on the ground already happening that we can uh, bolster and power uh, rather than create a, a new solution altogether. Novelty is not always uh, something to be desired in these contexts. It's, uh, it's effectiveness and efficiency is something we should be looking towards. And is, it, is this how the community does things? And this can't be overstressed enough. Uh, the, community, the community 
does things in particular ways. Every culture, every community has a particular mode of interaction, its own culture surrounding, whether it's online, in mobile projects, uh, local communities, you know, broadly, globally, nationally, it doesn't matter. Everything has its own way of doing things. And so we need to ask, does this technology, uh, and there's an assumption that in a mobile project there's gonna be technology involved, but this, does this talk of technology, uh, is it in sync with the local community in the ways they actually do things? Is it a challenge to the local community in their culture and their social interaction mechanism? So something to consider if, if you're placing yourself in opposition to the local community, their local modes of interaction, then uh, uh, you're gonna struggle. So practice, one big, uh, the biggest thing, and I think uh, there wouldn't be too much argument on this from the community, is that you want to avoid technology dumps. This was, uh, you know, this, I'm not going to point to any names in particular, but the solution is rarely, if ever, especially with mobile projects, is uh, to give technology, is to simply charitably uh, donate technology to a particular community. Uh, that goes back to the local context, it goes back to capacity, it goes back to culture and need. Uh, rarely, if ever, does that work, uh, aside from maybe uh, you know bandwidth initiatives or increasing connectivity possibilities, but it's usually, it's rarely the hardware uh, that is, uh, you know, is the most uh, critical element uh, in the equation. So avoid technology dumps, which is the advantage of mobile for development projects is the technology is relatively ubiquitous already. It's already there. Uh, you want to embrace local solutions and initiatives. Very important. Embrace capacity building and networking. Uh, you know, this is this is this is not an industry standard. This is more this is more my opinion. But embrace capacity building and uh, having uh, the capacity to build their own solutions. Right. So that's a good investment. Uh, networking. Embrace the concept of networking a, commu a disparate community together getting them started and then standing back because the community will self-govern, will self-organize and will determine their own needs and their responses to those needs. Uh, demand particip participatory design. Now, this is important. If you are developing a, a technological solution, an environment, a system, uh, you have to invest in stakeholders' opinions. You have to identify who's gonna be using this thing and have them involved in the design process. Uh, it's so critically important. They need to know that their voice was heard. In fact, their voices have to be reflected in that design, otherwise it's not gonna be used. Uh, you have to avoid this top-down sort of giving them a solution as opposed to developing one in conjunction with their with them as a, as, as a collaboration. So you wanna also think long and hard about sustainability and can this project sustain itself? Uh, remembering sustainability isn't just economic sustainability. Uh, there, there is a question of, is it useful? Will it maintain its use? Uh, does it serve as a hindrance to a limited resource environment? Uh, these types of things. So sustainability is a very complicated notion, but you need to think about that. What happens when, uh, when the money dries up? If there is money involved, and generally speaking, those ones... Um, you know, you have to be wary of ones with a lot of money because once the money dries up, then sometimes the momentum dies off as well. So think long and hard about sustainability. Sustainability is a very important facet of mobiles for development projects and all ICT for development. Um, does capacity exist? Will they use it? Will it be efficiently used? Does it have wiggle room for growth and evolution? Uh, can it change with the needs of the community? Uh, it's very important. In my experience, uh, there's a graveyard of well-meant and uh, well-meaning and well-intentioned projects that simply did not have a sustainability plan. And once the money dried up, so did the project. So avoid that as well. So that is the end of the presentation. It, just a quick introduction to Mobiles for Development for the Moby MOOC 2012 course. Uh, the references here uh, can be referred to as well. Uh, this presentation will be on SlideShare if you need to view it there. Uh, so we, uh, from here, I encourage you to go to the Moby MOOC discussion boards, introduce yourself, and uh, begin the conversation surrounding some of the discussion prompts I have listed there. Thank you for taking the time to look at the presentation.